Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about Spay Malt from Macallan, uh, bottled by Gordon McPhail, a single cask, cask strength bottling, uh, 248 bottles, bottled at 57.3% ABV. Um, Macallan, incredibly popular distillery, um, and it's entirely possible that you're looking at this and going, well, it doesn't look much like a Macallan. What's that label all about? Who the hell is Spaymalt? Uh, who the hell are Gordon McPhail that I've just mentioned? So before I tell you what this whiskey tastes like, uh, let me give you some background information, not just about Macallan, but also about Gordon and McPhail, um, which should give some context as to why this is a particularly special bottling. Originally an illicit farm distillery on the banks of the River Spey, Macallan became legal in 1824 when owner Alexander Reed obtained a license to distill following the Excise Act that took place the previous year. In 1892, the distillery was sold to Roderick Kemp, a giant of Victorian distilling who had previously owned Talisker, and it remained in the Kemp family hands until 1996, when it was taken over by Highland Distillers, who through various mergers and acquisitions became the current owners Edrington Beam Suntory. Macallan is probably one of, if not the, most famous Scotch single malt distillery, but the spirit was a key part of blending until a downturn in the whisky market during the early 1980s turned a focus towards single malt bottlings. An effort to position the brand early on as a super premium product, with the use of terms like first growth whisky and comparisons with the finest cognac, meant Macallan quickly became renowned as a luxury spirit. Helped by the fact the use of sherry casks produced a rich, sweet, silky whisky with very little that would offend a mainstream palate. In 2004, Macallan created a storm among drinkers with the introduction of the Fine Oak range, which introduced ex-bourbon cask matured spirit in addition to sherry matured stock, allowing the brand to satisfy increased demand, but in the view of many diminishing the classic character of the distillery. As a result, spirit and bottlings dating prior to this event are now in incredibly high demand, reaching ridiculous prices on the secondary market. Macallan accounts for about three quarters of the value of Scotch whisky sold via auction houses. In June 2018, Macallan officially opened a brand new distillery and visitor centre at a cost of roughly £140 million, a year behind schedule and 40% over budget. The impressive facility raised overall output by a third to cope with massively increased demand around the world, and plans for 16 new warehouses for maturation continue at an ongoing rate of two built every year. Spay Malt is the brand name of Macallan whiskies released by Gordon and McPhail. Originally a grocery store which opened in Elgin in 1895 by James Gordon and John Alexander McPhail, and which still exists to this day, the company is now a spirits distributor, wholesaler, and more importantly a maturer of single malt Scotch whiskies that is currently in the fourth generation of family ownership. Whereas independent bottlers purchase casks of whisky already matured, Gordon and McPhail have purchased new make spirit from a variety of Scotch distilleries since the early 1900s, maturing them in their own hand-picked casks thanks to relationships built up over many years. Indeed, Gordon McPhail can be considered to be one of the key factors of single malt scotch becoming so popular, due in part to the Connoisseur's Choice range that was created by George Urquhart in 1971, highlighting the individual character of separate distilleries that were otherwise lost within blending. Spay Malt Macallan Cask Number 1178 is a release bottled at a cask strength of 57.3% ABV from what appears to be a first fill sherry butt. There were only 248 bottles in the outturn and no chill filtration has taken place with no colour added. Okay, so Gordon McPhail, um, Spay Malt Whiskies is actually the company name of Gordon and McPhail. Um, Gordon McPhail is the company that I worked for immediately to, uh, before opening the Spirit Specialist. Um, I was with them for three and a half years um, and it was the equal best job I've ever had. Um, the other equal best job I've ever had was working for Oddbins uh, when I left university um, and also running my own business. Um, so it's an amazing company to work for. The portfolio that they've got, the history they've got, the whiskies that they deal with are just incredible, but also the integrity of the business. The people that I worked with were an amazing bunch and everybody clearly loved the products that we were working with. So I do miss working for them. I bear them absolutely no ill will with regards to them making me redundant because it ended up making me open my own shop. And it was a, something that they were 
kind of going to be doing anyway. So it was kind of inevitable. It was the right time for them to do it. And it was kind of the right time for me to actually make the step into, into opening my own business. So Spay Malt from Macallan. I mean, the label doesn't look great. Um, G&M did a, a rebranding of pretty much all of their ranges. They introduced the Discovery. They completely revitalized the Connoisseur's Choice um, uh, range uh, and made it look so much better. They haven't done anything with the labeling on this. What they have done is they've improved the box. Here's a picture of it because the box is out the back and I'm kind of tied into this microphone. So I'm not gonna go get it now. Um, the box does look a lot better, but they've not done anything with the labeling. And I think that's part of the contractual agreement that they have with Macallan as well. But Spaymall is essentially Macallan as people kind of want it. But because it doesn't look particularly great and it's not obvious that it's Macallan, or it's not obvious that this is like proper Macallan, you know, people will look at that and go, oh, well, that's an independent bottling of Macallan and, and, you know, it doesn't look particularly good. It's probably Macallan that they don't want. New make spirit that Gordon MacPhail have done their work with. So Macallan don't know if this is going to be any good because it's new make spirit straight off the still. Um, and arguably, Spay Malt Macallan bottlings are better than the standard Macallan that you're going to find on the shelf. Arguably because Macallan are making so much stock uh, and they want that consistency of their 12 year old, of their 15 year old, of their 18 year old. Whereas with this, this is one single cask. There are 248 bottles of this. That's it. Um, uh, so we're looking at a 19 year old from, I, I mean, looking at this color because no color or chill filtration is, is done as with the majority of the vast majority, if not all of Gordon McPhail bottlings. So this color, it's got to be first fill sherry butt as well. Um, McAllen are looking for that consistency all the way through, whereas G&M are able to go, that one is particularly good, that one is particularly good. Now this seems to be part of a range. That, so this is uh, cast number 1178. There is an exclusive one for America, which is 1180. And I think there's one for Europe as well, because I was when I was doing some research on this in terms of picking up the, the kind of ins and outs of the details, I think there's 1176 for Europe. So this is, as far as I'm aware, a UK exclusive but there is also a couple of other regional exclusives around the world. They're able to go, that cask is brilliant, bottle it, hold on to that one, hold on to that one. Now, there is also lots of rumors going around, and this is when I was working for them, that Macallan were running out of very old stock when they were in the process of building for their new distillery, which was going way over budget, and they needed income coming back in. So there was a very strong rumor going around, which is pretty much all but confirmed with regards to um, the financial figures that were released by G&M to the public, as you have to do as a public company, um, that included £27 million worth of whiskey sales. And essentially, everybody kind of put these rumours together with this announcement that there were some whiskey sales being sold and said, right, Macallan have bought £27 million worth of Macallan spirit that was maturing under G&M's uh, tenure, at back and they're going to bottle it up themselves and it wasn't that long after that that McAllen released the 72 year old Genesis and a lot of people were going where did they get that one from how did that suddenly appear could it be Gordon McPhail's so there are a lot of recent super premium bottlings that McAllen have released that a lot of people are going is that Gordon McPhail's stock there's a good chance it probably is can't say for certain, and I was working with the company, and never, nobody really said outright, but it very much was a case of, oh, hang on, there's this rumour going around, I've read this there, we've just announced this, it all kind of fits, but I don't have any actual concrete evidence that that's the case. So there you go. There is a, there some, you know, the, the latest, what is it, the 81-year-old Reach um, that looks like it's kind of being held by zombies. I strongly suspect that is actually Gordon McPhail's stock, which I think is why McAllen aren't really shouting about it, I think, but I'm not sure. Anyway, irrespective of that, Spaymalt McAllen, if you can find some, gives you fantastic value for money. So what we have here is a 19-year-old single cask, cask strength McAllen, single cask sherry, first fill sherry butt, which arguably most people are looking for from a McAllen rather than the fine oak, with the bourbon um, maturation as well in there. The retail price for this, when I got it from the um, from Gordon McPhail, 
the retail price is essentially coming in at about 160, 170, 175 quid for a 19 year old cast strength single cask Macallan, which is just insane because uh, the standard Macallan 18 year old Sherry Oak, you're looking at about 250, 270, and that's at 46% by recollection. So straight away, there is this mad price differential between what Gordon McPhail are kind of pitching their, their whiskey at as a Macallan. It just, you know, well, we can't get away with charging that amount for it because it's not an official bottling. But in terms of what you're getting in the bottle, straight away, just without even nosing it, trying it, you're getting incredible value for money. Or at least you would be if you could get your hands on one and also not have to pay the secondary rate because already there are auction houses and I'm noticing some retailers where this has been selling at auction for about 450, 500 quid. So there are some retailers that have managed to get a bottle. I don't know if it's from GNM directly and they are retailing it at 500 quid. Now, you'll notice that I've already poured this and the bottle is open and there is a lot left in this. What I'm doing with this is I'm going to decant this into 24 sample bottles, which will be part of a pack that will also include a number of other distilleries uh, and a number of other releases that have proved very, very hard to get hold of recently. And the reason for doing that is I would rather 24 people get to try this than one person buy this from me at retail and then maybe flip it unless I really trust them. Um, potentially flip this for 500 quid or just keep hold of it. So that's what I'm doing with this. That's the reason why this is open. It also allows me to do a review video, but it also means that there are more people that get to try this than one person then essentially making a profit out of another person that might make a profit out of another person. And so we go on and this actually gets open and drunk because there are only 248 of them. And there's probably a large proportion of these that are just gonna go around auction houses. So. What about the whiskey itself, I hear you ask. Get on with it, Ben. I also hear you shouting at the screen. So, incredible colour. I do have water with a pipette as well, just to add some uh, a couple of drops of water in once I get about halfway through, because I do want to see what this does with water. So, on the nose. Wow, I mean, straight off the bat, incredibly rich, deep, dark, super dark sherry. Now I'm assuming this is an Oloroso sherry cast that's being used. So while I was with GNM, we actually had a, a it was a three day um, training uh, trip to Hereth. Um, and we visited a couple of sherry bodegas, one of which was Williams, Williams and Humbert, which had a number of the casks which were being seasoned. So the sherry casks were being seasoned for three, it was three years for, uh, hang on, was it three years for, Edrington, who owned Macallan. It was two years for White and Mackay. And I think ours was ours because in my head, I'm still with GM. GMs were either three or uh, four or five year season, but they were seasoned for longer than Edrington and White Mackay were. So I'm assuming this is Oloroso, but the nose on this, you could almost say it's first fill Pedro Jimenez. It's so rich, it's so dark, it's so intense of deep, dark, super concentrated raisins. There is such a, a deep, dense, almost black Christmas cake here. We've got incredibly intense nutmeg, cinnamon, raisin, sultana, prunes, a real intense prune note on there. Black cherry. There's a slight nuttiness to it. So we're almost looking at kind of like Dundee cake with those almonds on the top. There is a touch of nuttiness, but the, the nuttiness is sweet. It's not particularly bitter nuts. It's, it's kind of almonds, a hint of Brazil nut in there. So there is a lovely nuttiness. There's a soft spice, it's just on the nose, on its own, absolutely incredible. So palate wise, And what's on the nose is absolutely on the palate. Jesus Christ, that is intense. That's all those descriptors that I put on the nose concentrated even more on the palate. 
It feels like the alcohol content is masking, but it's not overpowering. It does not feel hot. The intensity of the fruitiness that's in there is holding back what would be the heat from a high alcohol strength. But because of that concentration, it just keeps giving. The finish is still going now. It's still dark fruits. It's still black cherry, almost dark chocolate covered black cherries. Prunes are in there, very much pruny. We go from like raisin sultanas to prunes, even more concentrated dark fruit. There's a, that spiciness is there. There's a, a drying oak note on the finish, less so on the front, but it, it, it adds to the finish. It starts to work with the fruitiness and it, it doesn't take over, but it just moves the fruitiness to one side to get that oakiness to come through as well. Bags of flavor going on in here. Rich, fruity, dark sherry. It's, it's such a dark whiskey. It really is just intense darkness. There is a, a high cocoa dark chocolate note on this, but without being bitter. So it's like a very high cocoa dark chocolate bar that's studded with prunes and raisins and cherries and maybe not sea salt, but it does have, there is a slight spiciness in it that's not quite black pepper. And I think that's the kind of the, the drying oak element in there. Utterly, utterly incredible. So intense, so full on, such a concentration of flavors. Now, I don't have a huge amount in here because I want to try and make sure that I've got enough left to decant into the boxes, but I am gonna put a little, couple of little drops of water in here just to open it out because I don't think it needs too much. I think if you bottled this at say, I mean, 40, 43%, it would just be, it would just be too diluted. But 46, 48, it feels like sort of 48% is probably about bang on for still having some alcohol heat, but allowing the flavors more to come out. So I'm putting, I'm hoping enough drops that's not gonna over, over dilute it, but it's gonna temper the, the, the alcohol that's kind of wrapping around it and just holding everything in. Hopefully this will release more of the flavors within. On the nose, drops of water don't re haven't really done anything, but to be honest, neat it didn't feel it didn't nose like it was 57 percent because of the super concentration of flavors it's pretty much the same maybe slightly more of a leathery note coming through now kind of a, an aged leather not a, not a smokiness as such but there is there is something on the nose having added a drop of water that feels like it's moving towards smokiness but not really like i say it's more of a leather note Leather, kind of um, old wooden furniture, old mahogany furniture that's got kind of like a plenty of a, um, plenty of years of kind of varnish and cleaning and beeswax and yeah, there's a waxiness to this as well. There's very much a a beeswax on an old mahogany bureau that's got one of those like the writing table that had kind of leather inlaid that's like dark green and aged. And this 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 piece of furniture is about. 100, 150 years old. It's seen loads and loads of years on it. And that's just with a couple of drops of water that has just opened out this, this added dimension of the flavor. Now on the palate, still a little bit of a bite of alcohol, but I think I've just about got it right. The nuttiness is more pronounced now. It's less, actually no, it's kind of almonds as well, but you do get a little bit more of a Brazil nut and uh, hazelnuts. Less of the dark chocolate earthiness is coming through now. The fruitiness is much more restrained. It's less super concentrated prunes and we do get more of the raisin and sultana. The cherry note is still there, but just more in the background. I think I prefer this, neat. I think adding the drops of water, it has changed it. And to be honest, I much prefer, I think the nose has an extra dimension, but weirdly on the palate, It's just, just lost that spark that it had neat. It's still fantastic. There is still loads going on. And it's possible that with the pipette, I probably added three drops. It's entirely possible that just adding one or two, the smallest amount of water. So bringing it from say 57.3, I would, I would think I've probably got it down to about 48 and it might need to be 50, 51, something like that. 
just so there's a little bit more of that heat. It, just so that it's, it's still concentrated, but just loosened slightly. Whereas that just seems to have just dulled some of the edges that are on there that were actually making it superb. It is utterly incredible. It's a stunning whiskey. It's just absolutely amazing. And it, it, the fact that they were wanting to have it as a retail price as 160 quid is a joke. And I kind of think that, well, maybe not 500 quid, but 250 quid, that at the same price as the standard Macallan 18 year old Cherry Oak, that's head and shoulders above it, like by far. So considering that's 250 quid, 300 pound, 350 for that, I would get, I would say for a Macallan, because that's the way that the market is at the moment, do you know what? 300 quid for that, I think is absolutely a fair deal. So the fact that they were wanting 160-ish as their recommended retail price is nuts, absolutely insane. So if you can find it somewhere for that retail price, and from what I gather, there have been retailers that have literally had one bottle, it's gone, you know, put it on the, the website, on the shelf, and it's disappeared within seconds. The ones that have been selling it at roughly retail. 200 quid, I think, is still a really, really good price for it. 200 quid is a bargain for that. The ones that are selling it at 500 quid, yeah, kind of pushing it, but I get it because I can see why people are wanting to pay the money for this because this is something special. My concern is that all that's going to happen with this, because there are so few bottles, is they are just going to cycle around auction sites. They're going to sell for 500, give it a year, it'll be 600, give it a year, it'll be 700. Everybody's going to make a little bit of a profit and the, the, the liquid inside will never get drunk and never get appreciated, which is exactly why I want to decant the rest of this and allow 24 people to enjoy this because my words, that is absolutely stunning. And that's the reason for me doing it. So if you can find it, get it. It's just incredible. But if you can't find it very, very soon, in fact, if not by the time you're watching this, I'll have got it packaged up and the boxes will be available. I'm probably going to have to ballot them because judging by what else is gonna be in this box, I think it's going to be quite popular, but it will be worth it because that is absolutely amazing. And that to me is why Macallan is one of the most popular whiskies out there. It's the quality of the liquid in things like that. And that is also evidencing so clearly to me why Gordon MacPhail are such a phenomenal company in terms of what they are doing with new make spirit and what they are bringing to the market for people to enjoy and appreciate. So that's me done. I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.